Hey again, so this is part two of Python web scraping, making it useful. And what we're going to do in this video is actually send an email and record the actual price of this couch into a file every time we go get it, every time we scrape the website. So again, all the code is here on uh, GitHub and I'll include that in the description of the video. This web scraping quick and dirty part two useful dot high is the actual code we're using. So to show you what this does, and then I'll walk you through um, the actual code. Here I'm running it. We see, um, I'm just outputting this for my information, this date, but we wrote the file. We, um, also printing out the couch cost and sending an email and I forgot to show you uh, this with no email so I'm just going to delete this email this is the email I'm sending it to okay there's no email there let's run it again and there's the email and all it has is the couch, uh, couch cost so um, let's see I want to show you also this uh, file where I'm keeping a record of the price. As you can see, I've run it several times, a few times yesterday, a few times today. Um, and let's get into it. So from part one, where we just did a quick and dirty web scraping, we created this get web page method uh, right here as well as this parse page content method so we scraped the web page for that price of the couch right here um, and uh, then we uh, basically um, just got that value that was really it so what we've added in this video is a part to send an email and to write to a file so to, to do this, I'm importing a few more modules, these ones right here, and those are their purposes, as you can see. Now for sending an email, um, I'm using Gmail, so we can just basically attach to uh, Gmail's SMTP or email servers with these credentials. Don't use your normal email for this. Um, and this password will be changed by the time this video is posted on YouTube. So I'm formulating the message right here. I'm instantiating the, the mime or multi-part object. And then we uh, have the message subject from, to, and um, the body is actually the, the couch price, price, which I'm including there. So I just attach the body to this, this whole message. And then I send the message. Right here, as you can see, we're connecting to Gmail's SMTP servers um, on SSL, which is secure. And uh, connecting, we send the email from the from user to the to user, and send the message as a string. This message as a string, that's the data type. If it works, I'll just print email sent. If it doesn't, I'll print email not sent. And um, lastly, we write to the file, I'm getting the date and the time. I format it. This explains the format right here. That's what these uh, indicate. And uh, then we try writing the file, opening this historical price.txt file. A means we're appending to the file, so it's to the bottom of the file. We're not overwriting it. And plus means that we'll create the file if it's not already there. And um, we write couch costs and the price of the couch, plus the date, a few uh, new lines, and some delineation here of these of these um, uh, lines to indicate each time we write to the file to separate that. Um, then we'll just print it out, and if there's any problems, we'll just if there's a problem. I could handle these problems more uh, in another way to 
I'd send myself an email if if there is an exception for example I could call down here um, I could call the send email method and perhaps have some sort of statement in there to indicate if it's an error just send an email saying it's an error um, and here is my main function right now the the methods we've added are write to file uh, from part one we've added write to file now in part two and um, printing the couch cost and then I'm saying if the numeric the float value of, of couch value because couch value at this point is just a string so I can't compare a string to a number so I have to convert it on the fly to a float or a number is less than 1800 which as you can see it's 1799 now so every time I run this it will send me an email then send an email so I could change this um, you know with if I want to uh, track a flight, price of a couch, classifieds, uh, if like if a classified, if there's a classified ad that matches this text, or if the price of some item on the internet goes below such and such a price, then send an email. You know, there, there's a lot of different use cases here. So that is it. Um, let's run it one more time, just to show you again. You can we have one email there. I'm gonna run it one more time. Run it, ran it. There's the other email. Um, so lastly, another thing that's actually going to make this very useful is to schedule this somehow. How do we schedule this to run every day, for example? And on Linux, we can make a cron job. On Windows, you could probably use Task Scheduler. So I'll include in the description some links on how you might do those and explanations of cron jobs. And um, here I'm just listing my cron jobs. And uh, this these these top so this top section is just comments, but this bottom line is the actual cron job, and it's actually commented out now. I'm going to uncomment it and explain what it does now I'm in cron tab dash e will actually edit your cron job so write that so now it's I'm going to list the cron job again every minute it will uh, send you know run the script for me I could have it run every day many times a day once a week whatever I choose and so we should see another email pop up here any minutes uh, once the minute changes. All right, guys. So I figured out what was wrong with my cron job. It's it's not running as you can see, and that's because I'm referencing the old file from part one, a web scripting for converting. So I'm going to have to edit that. Which this is a good example of a cron job hidden to reference my new file. So let me get the name of. There we go. That should work. So let's wait for it to run. It is so it ran a little bit later than I anticipated, but there it is. Oh, and there's the couch cost. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Um, stay tuned for how I'm going to make this video better using Beautiful Soup, which is a more efficient way of scraping web data and more manageable as opposed to just stripping out text from HTML uh, manually. All right. See you next time.